Hey, hey, and good evening to my stream. This is Tiger. Welcome, AJ. Good evening to you as well. Today I actually almost managed it to coordinate the beginning of the game with the start of the stream. Hey Spectre, good evening to you, nice to have you on the stream. Yes, uh, what did I want to say? Disclaimer, obviously, we're talking about playing computer games here, so I'll leave the real trail, trains and railway installations alone and to the professionals in charge of this stuff. We're continuing our endeavors and adventures on the Midland Main Line by solving this puzzle with the distance signal showing a red aspect, for example. According what Rob was nice enough to comment on the last video. And um, we are going to look at the procedure that we actually have to go through when we are getting stopped by a red signal on a running line. Theodoros, hey, nice to have you on the stream. And Ravens Lofty, good evening to you. So, we are once more at the Midland Main Line. And what did I want to do first? I want to use this train, the high-speed train, the British Railways class. What was it? 43 no ma uh, normally. That is called just the high speed train for EMT. I use the two heads and six cars variant. And I want. You see, I've been busy here. I've actually played quite a lot. Perny, subscribe to tier 1. Thank you for the subscription very much. It is the class 43, yeah. Did I say 34? 43? The Journey Shrinker. <laughs> it's actually a nice train. It, you, you can feel that it is quite an oldish train simulation wise in the game. But it is really fun to drive, in my opinion. What I wanted to do is to start with a service running from Nottingham to London St. Pancras. Obviously, we're not going to London St. Pancras because we stop at Leicester because the rest of the journey is not simulated anymore. What do we use? I want to do it in autumn since it is getting so hot now. I want to have a bit autumn weather. Not actually foggy, but light clouds. The fog will come more or less by itself. Theodore says, sorry, I missed last few streams being doing other stuff congrats to the 500 subs on youtube thank you very much yeah no problem at all i'm happy every time you guys log onto my stream but obviously i can understand that everyone is busy doing other things so just let's have a relaxed time if it fits into everybody's schedule so on the British Railway Class 43 high speed train at Nottingham. It is a slam door train with a central locking system. You think back on to our Glossop stream about the different ways of doing train dispatch and station protocol. So we rely on a guard. We do not even have controls for the doors here in the cab. So this train cannot be run with driver only operation. And also the GSMR radio thingy is not um, simulated here in the game. Signal is green, set to D. Controls always remind me of the class 66. You have this PBL stuff for the braking system, the poussoir bouton locomotive, brake controls that are 
typically electric control on the locomotive and then the cars are controlled by a pneumatically working brake pipe just like on the class 66 leaving Nottingham why did that screenshot win the contest? asked Perny well if I was to understand every decision that DTG and their staff are taking I could tell you I don't know it's not a bad screenshot right but we have seen better ones no question well unlike me on the last stream this train actually stopped at the Nottingham home signal so we are not bound to crash into it and see how smoothly the game runs at the moment at least and see how smoothly I am chinxing it well we'll see I really like those services on, on the high speed train here I guess I got another spad I already made a dent in my left shin bone for the spad so what I meant to say is I really like those services where you can just drive and drive and adapt to the speed limits on a train like this the annoying thing on this train is that if you're driving it at night you can illuminate the dials and gauges but the hands don't get illuminated so you cannot read your dials because you don't know where the hands are pointing so you always have to switch on the cap lights to be able to read your gauges and that kills the immersion a bit apart from that I really love driving this train on longer distances it's not so super long here in this DLC but nevertheless it's British so tea and biscuits time with the manager yes I already did that luckily that I am my own manager here at Tiger Ways Railroad and Railways <laughs> and they admonished me not to read the chat while under caution, while driving under caution. What is obviously quite a good idea. If it's a spat, you are not getting biscuits. No, only tea poured over my head, probably. <laughs> but they actually say that a lot, right? tea and biscuits meeting with the manager <clears throat> at least we found out that with the load last checkpoint feature you can relive, relive your moment of shame as often as you want
it's definitely something localized to railway terminology I think I've never seen it used outside of that it says Ravens lofty the tea and biscuits meeting So stopping at Beeston. Why we're always stopping at Beeston, I'm not entirely sure because the platforms are much too short for our train to stop here actually. So I try to stop it. Two yards. Obviously I'm a bit late, but that is not so bad. Did you see how the doors just closed when I switched to the camera at the back? That is a bit weird with the drawing distance along the train here. Let me use that camera here. Super Paul, hello, nice to have you on the stream. Spectre says you are only in serious trouble if the manager does not offer tea and biscuits. Well, and Ravenslofty says for an HST I think you can make an argument to have the front engine pass the platform edge to fit the carriages. Yes, I would actually do that and then you can fit because there is actually a lot of room with the engines. What is nice is that the doors are not closing at the same time. But now look, it looks like the last door is still open, right? But you look at it from the back. Ploops! They close. Like, well... Sorry, we forgot to close the doors. You've got an RPM meter here on your train. Well, it's quite rare, actually. And that helps you a lot, especially in snowy and wet conditions, so that you don't get wheel slips when accelerating. And now the next station, if I remember correctly, Lovebrew. The HST doors are pretty funny. While they are still in service, I would while they were still in service I would terrify my foreign friends by opening the doors from it <laughs> during during the train in motion no you did not beat the central locking system well unfortunately I never had the opportunity to ride on a real HST So, passing Attleboro. Unfortunately, they, they still have not figured out why the second horn position does not work from my keyboard shorts. It's 80 here, if I'm not mistaken. And soon enough, there will be a limit to 70. And then we're going across the junction and through what's it called? Red Hill Tunnel. Yep. Here's already the part where you can go towards Derby to the right. 30 and then 10 when you're crossing over. 
to the derby line but we're going straight ahead and through a light a right left combo and then one more signal and then the limit to 70 70 until we are on the bridge then 90 through the tunnel after the tunnel because before we get to East Midland Parkway in Bangladesh India that's just like another Tuesday opening doors during the train in motion right all right Sometimes you wonder why they even bother closing them in the first place. Well, actually, like like here in Germany as well, 50 years ago, you would see a train arrive at the station and people opening the doors just before the train grinds to a stop and starting to jump out. Oh, well, maybe not 50 years ago, 70 years ago, more like. So, across the bridge. Isn't that a nice view on the scenery here? Bridge, tunnel, station, power plant. And now see, we can, o we can have the instrument lights on, but we only see the dials, but not the hands. Now we can start accelerating because we are at 90 at the moment, getting 110 around here and then passing East Midland Parkway, what is it? Parkway, yes. At the power plant. Perny says absolutely beautiful and Ravensloft says Morocco doesn't close the doors to begin with. Alright! If you don't close the doors, then you actually around the danger that the doors, the doors open during driving accidentally. So, not to forget, I mustn't forget to stop at Love Brew. They do 160 kilometers with open doors. Well, that teaches the passengers to sit down, I guess. <laughs> and don't wander around aimlessly on the train. More green programs, use less AC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when we're approaching Lufbru, there is a hidden a hidden increase in speed limit from 110 to 120 there is this is not signaled here for whatever reason it's not so important for us because we have to stop at love brew anyway well if you're doing a service that there are some services that run from derby to leicester with out a stop on the way and then you're coming here on your 110 limit and here you can see we are just about to get into a 120 increase but there is no sign and now we are almost train has to pass now we are actually in it traveling the length of the train and now we are in the 120 part without us having passed the sign 
enough to coast into love through here. Might be a bit late, but who cares? This train really coasts beautifully. That's actually something that I enjoy doing a lot during nights, just have this train coast like the last 5-6 miles into the station. And as far as I can see, we're not having any dynamic brakes here. We're just braking with... Pneumatic brakes. Or I actually did not look it up. But we are, at least we're not getting any reading for any dynamic braking here. The unavoidable midland rain starting <laughs> what are dynamic brakes <coughs> on a diesel multiple unit you can actually have different kinds of dynamic brakes the obvious reason or the ob obvious solution would be the electric brakes that change the polarity of the driving motors and convert or transfer the kinetic energy of the trains of the train into an electric current that is then burned in in a uh, uh, rheostats or actually fed back into a grid that's the dynamic brake style that you have on most modern trains some diesel trains with a hydrodynamic transmission can also use a hydrodynamic brake so you would just pit the kinetic energy of the train against a fluid that is stopped by a rigid wheel. But I'm not sure if the HST has any kind of dynamic brakes of that kind. And Ravenslofty says, I mean the Voyages are sort of a modding HST and they have rheostatic braking. Well, typically if you have rheostatic braking, then at some point in your cap you have an indicator showing you the brake effort, just like the traction effort. But we don't have that here, so I would have to look it up actually if there is any sort of dynamic braking on the HST. CD radar! Nice to have you here. Do you know if the HST has any form of dynamic braking? Even if it does not say so. And for what it's worth, it does not feel as if this train has any sort of dynamic braking. At least they have no lever to actively activate it, so if at all then there must be some kind of automatic blending. Now we've got wheel slips because we have a wet track. Look at that.
We don't even have a sander here, at least no working one. Where is the map title? You're right. I actually prepared it but did not activate it. I even prepared the service title, see? So much for my relaxed starting with a service. So, last lap, Love Brew to Leicester. We are in a 120 limit here. See the radar is using my pop icon, I see. Or <laughs> I actually assigned all the icons according to what Twitch gave me even though I did not really know what those things meant This area here actually looks nice. I doubt that it looks that nice in real life, but nevertheless. Now we are down to 110. Train from the opposite direction. Almost no stuttering. That's Barrow upon Soar, if I'm not mistaken. A stop only for the slow line. And here, we can hardly read it, but limit increases to 115. Passing this freight yard to the right, I forgot the name. Monster Rail or something like this. Is a speed sign that's only for the crossover here. That must be Celebi or Celebi. Modeled quite nicely here, those towns around the line. And if I'm not mistaken, the limit increases to 120 here. At least, if you look at it on the Diagram it increases from 115 to 120, but the signaler or the person who put up the signals and signs here. Can you see why I'm showing this? Thought, well, maybe the high speed trains are always so fast. Let's give them a handicap versus the other trains. They should be able to catch up here a bit. Well, Easter egg. Honestly, maybe they should be turned around, right? High speed train 120, other trains 110. Inspector says, Do you have passengers in the Midlands? HST on my 
PlayStation 5, the coaches are often completely empty. One of them, don't remember which version of the train, seems to be a bug. Um, not entirely sure. Let's check it out. Well, some... Not too many, though. Does anyone know where this sound effect comes from if I hit this button here to bring up this menu? It's always like opening a window. Now I am in for coasting. There is the last Little station before we get to Leicester with the name of Sim. It's always a mixture of system and symptom, right? System or something it is. It's quite normal in the games to see the radar that there is no one on the train on the route, but during shunting, the train is crowded. Happens, yeah. Like this. The Aurora's, that's. The UI sound, yeah. <laughs> yes. Notice that the same on H S E H S recently. Empty coach move, not in service, and every seat was taken. Yeah. You never have that many people on board uh, as in the depot. So, at the end of the straight, we're running into a 115 limit and then shortly after a limit to 90. And then we get a Mopus board for a slowdown to 40 and with 40 we can enter Leicester Station. It almost this is the Morpeth for the forty. So I can stop the wipers, can I not? That is the caution on the home signal sending us to platform 3 and the 40 starts about at those switches that belong to the crossover. Here is a interesting installation where we have only one slow line down and up at the same time. We have up and down fast, and we have a goods line now to the right here.
And here we are at Lister. Yes. That was the first service for today. And um Is it Lakester? It's a CD radar. Now we need no, it's not, he says. Well, then we don't need to call on Raven's Lofty to tell us what it is or how it is pronounced properly. Lancaster. Well, you never know with those thingies. But you know that there is a presentation now. Is there? Did I not start a presentation? Oh, yeah, I did. Here it is. So. Just short recap. Yeah, I summoned you to tell us if it is Leicester or Leicester, like CD Raider said, but he did not mean it seriously. But you can tell me how those other names are pronounced Leicester. And what is it? Celebi? Celebi? And Systom? On the road to there? Well, we're waiting for this. While I am just recapping what we talked about last week, we had looked at our little example thingy with the two lines up and down and with two signaling boxes, the Alpha Juliet and the Tango Yankee signaling box. We have talked about that typically you have one line, the left one, for one direction and um, this one is signaled also in this direction and then we have talked about the situation that typically the first block signal, the first stop signal, a signal that can show a red aspect of a given signaling box is called the home signal. Yeah, your favorite junction. And that signals that are controlled by the signaler at the signaling box are plaked like this, are plated, plated like this, if you want it like that. It has the Alpha Juliet for identifying the signaling box and a unique identifier for the signal. So this signal would be Alpha Juliet 211. And uh, at the exit of a station, you typically have also a control signal that is sometimes called a starter signal. The technical term would be a section signal because it is a block signal that is neither a home nor an intermediate block home signal controlling the entrance to the next section. It is plated the same way and we have talked about the fact that typically the identifiers are increased by two um, so that you can uh, see that in one direction you have the even numbers, in the other direction you have the odd numbers. At the next station for the next signaling box you have more or less the same arrangement. The first block signal, the first section signal is a controlled signal called the home signal and it has then the identifier for the other signaling box like Tango Yankee and then 219 also a starter signal for that one. Then we have talked about automatic signals in between subdividing the distance between the two stations, the controlled areas like here Alpha Juliet 215 and that automatic signals, according to the rules, are marked with this special sign, a uh, horizontal black bar on a white background. We also have talked about semi-automatic signals that have the word semi or semi on this automatic signaling plate at the junction here towards the CD radar depot and maintenance facility. Uh, Rob, in his comment to my last week's video, confirmed that you would use semi-automatic signals on junctions that are not used that much. Perhaps it is only a ground frame here, so an installation where you can operate the switches from one central point, but 
it that is not manned all the time but it is only if you use it or need it and then you can operate the junction signal here typically this works as an automatic signal but if you need it you can take control over it to send trains to the cd radar maintenance facility we've talked about distance signals that cannot show a stop aspect a red aspect so this is more or less the dividing line between distance signals and stop signals stop signals can show a red aspect distance signals can't and that they are typically plated in a way that they have a white triangle and they have the same signal number the same identifier as the stop signals that they refer to so here the distance signal for tango yankee 219 will have the same identifier tango yankee 219 and the white uh, triangle they can also have an r behind the identifying number and sometimes they have both the white triangle and the r after it we have also talked about outer distance signals they can be a bit away from the stop signal that they belong to then they would be marked with an r r the r actually i think stands for repeater and this is the repeater for the repeater <laughs> yes Tango Yankee, Tango Yankee, Tango Yankee. It's also short for thank you. An outer distance signal can can be <laughs> can be here without a distance signal, but typically you have a two-tier system where you first have the outer distance signal then the distant signal, so that the worst uh, aspect that the outer distance signal can show. Yes, I, 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 I is even better than CD radar. Well, can be a double yellow at this point. Um, and typically the same identifying number for that. We have talked about banner repeaters. There are the simple banner repeating signals that can either show an indication that tells us the next signal is at stop if we have the horizontal bar and they are plated in a way that they have the BR for banner repeater or the Bravo Romeo underneath the signaling identifier. So this will be the proceed aspect. And there are also the three state banner repeaters with the green background proceed aspect as well. And they are marked on the plate with this sign so that you can see that this is a banner repeater that can show three aspects and if it is not showing a green aspect then you're not getting a green aspect on the next signal also here same identifying number and the bravo romeo attached then we have talked about uh, a different way of signaling like here example for the uh, other direction we're leaving tiger station tango yankee 218 and then the block is not subdivided by a row of automatic signals before we get to the home signal of the uh, Alpha Juliet signaling box. But we have a signal that can have this identifying plate with this uh, vertical black bar on white background. And that will be an intermediate block home signal that subdivides the distance between both signaling boxes into an intermediate block section and then an absolute block section we have also seen that there can be more than one intermediate block home signal and then you have also more than one intermediate block sections but the last section is always the absolute block section i have said that i'm not entirely sure if that is a thing that is only historical or still has a use it, from what you can read it is a situ or it is a, a solution where tiger signaler can get the trains out of his station and send them up to a certain point before the train before has reached the ha station uh, that speeds up things and what is the benefit compared to automatic signals all the way it's probably a thing that they are cheaper because you need uh, track circuitry only for the intermediate block section plus the overlap because as soon as this section is clear then tiger can send a train in and not for the rest until we get to aj home uh, signal 
Well, I have also, uh, yeah, we'll get to this later. And then we have talked about co-acting signals, like the one at East Midland Parkway, that can be in a position where you think that belongs actually to the opposite direction line, but the Charlie Alpha underneath the signaling identifier tells you that this is just a clone of Tango Yankee 221. And CD Radar says, if I was a video watcher, I would hate me because you're all <laughs> always chatting in between. Well, it's not a problem. It actually, in my opinion, loosens things up a bit. So, that was that. And what can I add to that? Um, we had the situation in London Brighton, where we actually found a signal that had an identifier like this one here. It has an identifier with... a uh, with a white triangle but showing a red aspect and rob actually had a solution for this in the comments uh, under my last video and i would, will will tell you about this in a second but first uh, some errata one that i forgot just last week what signal is that if you have a signal with this not with a horizontal bar not with a vertical vertical bar but with an interrupted bar well not to make it too uh, mysterious this is not a signaling identifier sign at all but it is a mid-platform train berth marker so in some situations where you are supposed to stop your train not at the end of the platform but in the middle because the other part of the train of the platform is used by a different train a bit like the situation where we would have the Zugdeckung signal in Germany, for example. And this is a marker where it tells you you can stop here. Your train is fully on uh, on the platform, even the back end. So this is a thing that is in the rules. It looks as if it would be just, or if it was, um, another version of those kinds of identifying plates, like vertical and horizontal bars. And here it's just intermediate, but it's totally a different different thing so another thing that rob told us in the comments is that for more than a decade he said uh, the rules for identifying signals with automatic signal plates and uh, stuff like this for semi-automatic signal plates have been uh, loosened in a way that they don't need to be marked anymore and it's a thing for the signaler to know what signal is controlled and what is automatic the driver does not need to know anymore why is that so because um, in former times automatic signals could be parsed a bit like stop and proceed signals in the american operating rules on the driver's own authority if they showed red and did not change for a time, then the driver could pass an automatic signal, not a control one, under certain circumstances. But those rules obviously have been, or apparently have been withdrawn. I was not able to find them in older versions of the RSSB rulebook. And uh, since there is actually no significance for the drivers anymore, it is no longer necessary to mark uh, automatic and semi-automatic signals with those plates. According to Rob, and I have no uh, reason to not believe him, the thing with the intermediate block home signals, I think they still need to have their uh, marker plates because there are some special rules for uh, handling those signals. At least I stumbled across them when I uh, read through the RSSB rule book. So without going any deeper here, we just have to keep in mind that sometimes automatic signals and semi-automatic signals are not marked as you would expect them to be marked according to the rules. Yeah, what I also have read is that intermediate block home signals typically have distance signals belonging to them. So here like for the Tangy Yankee 2 one six romeo it can have its own distance signal and then the home signal here would have also a distance signal if that is always so if this is necessarily so i don't know but um, it actually makes sense to fit them with their own distance signal that was repetition recap 
from last week and now Manti May, I want to honk the horn when I can do it again. I will honk for you, Manti May. Thank you very much for appearing on the chat. In the presentation, the honk, uh, the, ho the horn is silent. <laughs> Only honks honk during the presentation. <laughs> but then I will honk for you. Well, the solution for why can we have a distant signal with a red aspect. And if I got this correctly, Rob will certainly... Uh, correct me if I am not, then, is th then it is this idea. So this is the part of track here simplified. We have two uh, lines up and down. And uh, this is Balcom Station. This is the direction towards Brighton, to the south. And this is the direction towards London, north. And we have Balcom <laughs> Balcom Tunnel here. So here we are coming from three bridges. Here is the tunnel and then Balcom. And the signal we're talking about was about here. We will get to this. And the left line obviously is the one that is typically used for going to Brighton. So a train coming here from three bridges through the tunnel traveling this direction would have passed a signal Tango 299. In the tunnel there is a signal that is called Tango 303. It is marked as an automatic signal and it has this diamond with the X on it. We will get to this later what it actually means it well to spoiler it it tells you that you should not leave your train here at the signal if it is red what it makes a lot of sense in the tunnel then there is a signal uh, tango 307 marked as a control one then you run into a banner repeater uh, before you get to bulk home that is marked as a three state banner repeater tango 311 and then for some weird reason marked with an r in the game not with a br with a bravo romeo but only with a romeo i think this is um a bug uh so it has been not uh, identified correctly it should be uh bravo romeo also in the game i've watched a cap view video and it is a bit fast at this uh, part but i think it is actually uh, VR, not R, here at this point, and then you get to the corresponding stop signal, where is, well, can't call it the home signal because we're always in tango signaling territory, but this is the signal that you pass before you get into Balcom Station 311. This will be the line for the other direction, um, but those lines are not only used in their primary direction, but they are also signaled for the uh, wrong direction so wrong direction movements on a line are typically called if you're going against the signaling that there is and there are very restrictive rules for that but sometimes you use a line in both directions with one primary and one secondary bi-directional lines and then they can have signaling for both directions and since we have only one pair of lines here they are actually signaled for both directions for convenience so this line is also signaled towards London and also this line what is actually the line for the opposite direction for the wrong direction is also signaled towards Brighton and if you're coming from three bridges you pass Tango 301 and you get into the tunnel and you get this signal sign here again a white triangle Tango 305 again the white diamond with the X telling you that you should not leave your train here in, uh, if you're capped at this uh, signal and then this is the signal that puzzled us last time this is the signal with a white triangle Tango 309 before you get to the banner repeat the same problem with the R here and then the signal in front of Balcom station Tango 313 so you see that not only are we only using the odd numbers when going to Brighton it also jumps from left to right and back again when you're going over both lines here the numbering so actually those two signals here are designated as being distant signals but they show a red aspect if you pass them and if you pass them as a train going towards london and why this is so um rob had the explanation for that actually if your train was to travel on the wrong direction track, 
against the direction of traffic. Actually using the right track to go to Brighton. Those signals would only show those aspects as the worst aspects. And then it is quite clear that you have a distance signal here and an outer distance signal here before you get to Balcom with their um, uh, quasi home signal, Tango 313. And uh, Rob told me that it is actually possible that distance signals and outer distance signals do not necessarily need to share the identifying number of the stop signals that they refer to, but they can have their own identifying number if it is easier to mark them like this. But why do they show now a red aspect when we pass them, be it on the left line or on the right line, uh, right line going to London or if we pass them when we are going to Brighton on the left line, just as we usually do with most of the services in this DLC. This has to do with the idea that if you are the driver of this train coming from London, traveling on the left, normal, regular line towards Brighton, and you're coming through the tunnel, you might remember it is like a light bend to the left. Coming through the tunnel in the bend to the left, the first signal behind the tunnel you would see is this yellow signal. And because there is a bend to the left, you don't see the red signal here. Then you might miss this red signal, not stop in front of it because you think you get a yellow proceed aspect at this signal and mistake this signal for being the signal that belongs to your line. And for minimizing this risk, those signals can be put to red if this line is not used in this direction. This is why I crossed it out here. So if this line is actually not used for trains coming from London going to Brighton, not used in the opposite wrong direction, then those signals can be switched to red, even though they are no stop signals, but only distance signals. What tells us the distance signals are signals that cannot show a stop aspect if that line is actually used. But they can show red lights if they are not used at all. Rob called it not approachable on red distance signals on bidirectional lines signal for the wrong direction. So if we are signaling a bidirectional line for the wrong direction, the secondary direction, those signals can be held at red if this direction travel is not used so not to confuse drivers on the train running on the regular line and who could mistake a signal that shows a uh, yellow here for a proceed aspect for his or her own line. So if I understood correctly what Rob told me in the comments then this is the explanation why we can see a red aspect on this signal if we are actually traveling towards London or towards Brighton on the correct left line. It is still to prove if the game is uh, simulating this correctly and if I got this correctly for doing a free roam movement with a train traveling on the wrong direction line from three bridges to Balcom and if we get the double yellow and the single yellow aspect here. So that was the first part of the presentation. Maybe we just cut it here and go back into a different service and then I can honk the horn for Marty May. Manty May, sorry. But first I have to change the service indicator. I wanted to do this one because if I'm not losing too much time, we're actually stopped at the red signal in this service here. This is not a nice position. That will be on the sprinter again. And it's the 12 to 8 April clear. Okay, let's do this like that. Just open the doors quickly. They open even though you have not activated the train yet. 
Try it on the Chi SMR. Don't forget the DRA. Close the doors as quickly as possible. Because we have the ghost guard on this train who always takes quite some time to close his doors. And then we will be late. So 15, 25, 50, 80, no. 15, 25, 50, 65 start here, I think. 15, 25, 50, 65, yes. And now we do the honking, as promised. So, going across. The switch is here. Oh! I turned the switch too far for the lights. I'm sorry. Where is your E? Ravensloft says, I was watching a great northern video on what to do on an ETCS trip and it was quite interesting and also somewhat concerning, alright? So maybe you can link this video. Then we can find out what was concerning about And the proper horn for a super pole. Now it's the 50 here. After driving the HST, it's always a bit. Funny to go back to the sprinter here. Yeah? They are redeeming Hong the Horn. Syston is it is it it is Syston. Here's the 65. And we can speed up a bit. So this is a rather new train in the game and we have a somewhat working GSMR radio here. What is good for using it for the today's topic of what to do when we are got detained at the red signal? When we got to change, yes. Works like this as well. So we're on this slow line that is actually a bi-directional line for both directions, up and down slow in one. On the left, the pair for the fast travel.
And we only have three steps on the brakes here. We have one, two, full. Did you hear the effect for the bridge Whoosh, on the sound? That's quite nice. We're not slowing down for system, are we? No, only after system. We are in a 50 limit. HST train coming from the opposite direction. It's probably the, the service that we just drove to Leicester. What happened to AJ, by the way? Are you already asleep? He actually has a being asleep icon. So, am I losing enough speed? No, I'm not losing enough speed. Gotta get the brakes full on. And I'm still f a bit fast. Here's the 50. Yeah, uh, just like this. So never forget to initiate the closing doors early on so that you don't have to wait for the guard. Paul says, have you ever thought about doing a stream about the different couplers, how they work and rules how to couple? Actually, I have given that a, f a thought talking about the different couplers and the rules for coupling and what actually what difference it actually makes if you have like buffers on the side of your cars or if you have the buffers on the middle but it's not so super easy that is a great idea, says CD Raider. Well, then I will definitely pursue this. And maybe we find out why the flying Scotsman was able to couple up to those uh, MTBA cars. But we were not able to release the brakes. Like, this train definitely has a, a special kind of a coupling. See? It's not a Buckeye, it's not a Scharfenberg, it's not the typical chain. A screwling coupling. Yeah, that's brought me to the idea. Ah, great. Yeah, good point. I definitely will pursue this. From 50 to 65, the limit here. Before we get to Celebi.
Or was it here? It's all 65 until we get to Barrow. Semi-automatic coupler Scharfenberg. I've watched a video about the old AK-69 couplers on those heavy, heavy ore trains that they had in the 60s and 70s in Germany. The interesting thing is that if you have your buffers in the middle of the cars, you lose all this interesting stuff about putting your first vehicles into G and the rest into P, because you don't need that anymore. Mantime gifted a tier 1 sub to Super Paul. It's the first gift sub in the channel. This is actually the first gift sub in the channel ever. Thank you so much, Manti May. And see the radar. And Super Paul says thank you. And what CD radar says, I don't know because I don't ma don't know my own <laughs> icons, unfortunately. And Manti May says, bitte schön in the best German. Look at the scenery. I, I'm, I really like how the little stations along the line are modeled. It's pretty. You see that the sub icons are better. I actually have no idea. Yes, they are they are no longer white, but they I actually bought those those icons and emojis. Because AJ was bickering me for weeks that I should buy them because they are pretty and they actually are pretty there are those uh, yeah those things that you have in front of your name now don't know actually what they are called they are not called emojis badges maybe they are nice I think Next up, barrel upon saw. Another of those names names that makes you wonder how you come up with a name of that kind. No, that's cool, says CD Raider. Makes me think of subscribe. Unfortunately, AJ, 
is asleep, she will be so happy that the badges and emojis that she found for the channel get actually used. You're crying because <laughs> this is the way to. I don't know. Anyway. We are at Barrow Upon Saw. Mentime says, I have to go now. Have a nice evening. Thank you very much for dropping in, Mentime, and have you a nice evening as well. Thanks for the sub and the redeeming and everything. Almost managed to be short here. So, Love Pro is next. I think I have to push this baby a bit more, like throttling up faster. The HST has only five notches, this is why I'm always reluctant to go up this fast, but I'm on a different train now. And CD Raider says he has already pre-ordered Semmering Barn. Well, I might have done this. But on Epic Game Store you cannot pre-order. At least I have not seen an opportunity to do so. Going into Lovefro, I think we have to yes, we have to slow down to fifty and then forty first. around the corner here already. Can start slowing down to the foof 50. Theodoros, what topic are you gonna discuss on Zemmering Barn? Or is it gonna be chill and watch the view stream? Um, I, I don't know because I typically drive a route and then I find something interesting and this is then the topic for the next stream. So I would have to play Zemmering Barn a bit. 
Maybe this gives us the opportunity to discuss how Bremshundertstel are calculated according to Austrian roots, uh, rules. At least I was hoping for that a bit. Especially running through the mountains. Has, well, some special requirements for Bremshundertstel berechnung. So maybe that. And then if I drive on a route and find some peculiarities, some special signs that we have not seen before, some special signals, or if the trains have some technology that we have not talked before, uh, yeah, talked about before. So this is how I find the topics. So, let me stop here and then read the chat. CD Raider says, I'd like to go there before they open the base tunnel. So would I. CD Rail Chat to Graz. <laughs> I don't know if you're aware, Paul, that CD Radar actually used to work on the railjet. And you live in Graz? Oh, that's nice. So you can be our expert for Austrian things. So, starting in the 40 limit, I think the 40 limit actually is still valid a bit after the station. Now we can hear an HST train coming from behind. Yes, it's a bit, and then it's going to 75. So, to jinx it even more, I'm quite happy how my game is performing today. Maybe it pays off that I drove this route so often back and forth on the HST that now all the shaders have been cached. Still in the 40. Quite busy here, right? One train, two train, three train. Ah, uh, this is a thing that I wanted to discuss with you. Because that single here, uh, that signal here is peculiar. Peculiar. It is a red signal at the floor and it is captioned with, hello, can I please focus on the signal here? L O S. So, I have not found any reference to a signal of that kind. We are obviously not running on this line. It is put up to the right, not to the left, where you usually would expect them to be. So, my best guess is that this is a limit of shunt signal, a signal that you typically have on those little dwarf signals with the two red lamps next to each other horizontally. And that is 
well, a weird version of a limit of shunt. LOS, what, can it, what else can it be? Line of sight? Weird. Probably not. So I guess this is a weird version of a limit of shunt service for Loughborough Station on this wrong direction line. If you know better, please let me know. Here is the 75. And while we were accelerating, I can read the chat. And Paul says, yes, unfortunately, I'm not in 4 hour bag that often, but I know the simmering barn very well. Unfortunately, I have a lot of expectations and will probably quickly be disappointed with the route. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, let's hope it will be quite nice. And the CD Raider says, same for him. We will see. Maybe this is actually a route that I will buy at release. Did you hear the transmission switching at about 60 miles? Next up at East Midlands Parkway. Oh yeah, that's true. Maybe Paul can verify that mystery with the 2000 Hz magnets at the Signalnachahme. Not at the main signal, but at the Signalnachahme, like in Bregenz. So I hope I'm not too late at East Midlands Parkway so that I will get stopped at one of the signals at the junction. Maybe I will do that as super for yeah. But as I always say, leave the real railway installations to the professionals. But maybe you can find someone there at Briggins to ask about that. I actually have a friend who is a professor in, in Switzerland and he travels almost every weekend between the Switzerland and Germany and uh, He knows that I am interested in trains and he sends me a lot of pictures and he has absolutely no qualms to ask every train driver he meets about the specifics of his train and stuff. Unfortunately he never went to Bre Bregenz and <laughs> did not meet anyone. He could have asked. So. 
Let's try not to spat here. Double yellow. Theodora says the sweet bun upgrade in RW Austria forum does a pretty good job of making the route beautiful if you play Terrain Simulator Classic. You can also play a CD railshed driver there. Maybe I should look more into the Terrain Simulator Classic. I only own it because I bought a bundle or two for Train Simulator Classic, but I have to admit I never really played it a lot. Yeah, one at Humble Bundle and I think one at Fanatical as well. And the humble bundle bundles are actually really a bargain if you don't own Train Sim World 4 yet. And it's up at the moment for Train Sim World 4 with a lot of DLCs. Actually, two that I don't own yet. Now I own them on Steam. Of course, I bought the bundle anyway, but not on my primary Epic Game Store. And Super Paul says, but I think I have to hurry because they want to build a new train station in Bregenz, so that could change soon. Oh yeah, that might be so. There was a simmering barn with Terrain Sim. You later, classic. So, we're starting at the yellow signal. Train Simulator Classic costs you a lot, he says, uh, Theodorus. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I've looked into it. They are not really cheaper. But in the bundle, it was not much money invested, I should say. So, we are still running under caution. I'm not telling this because you wouldn't know. But because I am not supposed to forget it. And there is a red signal behind the tunnel, more or less. I hope it is still red when we get there. So that I can actually demonstrate what to do at a red signal. That end of tunnel light effect is not so bad in this DLC. Coming out of this beautiful entrance and here is already the magnet oh it already switched to a green one then we have been too late 
or I took the wrong service because we are actually going to the left. Maybe I mixed up the services. I played one service where we had to wait here. No, we're going to the left. It's, it's, it's correct. It's correct because we are going always to the left here. If we want to go to Nottingham. But well, then we might have just been late for the train to stop us here, or we have been too fast and missed the train. I think I have played this service before and I was detained at this signal. Well, then let's do the presentation anyway here. What I wanted to talk about today is... Is there a protocol what we do if we get detained at the red signal at a running line? Do we just wait for the signal to turn green? Or do we call the signaler every 15 seconds and ask him if he can get a green light? Can we get green can we get a green light? Can we get a green light? Can we get a green light? No, there is in the rules, I have mentioned them here, a protocol. What you have to do if you are detained at a signal of danger, as a train, on a running line, at a signal of danger, obviously. This is our signal of at danger, and we are a train and not a shunting mo movement. By the way, this is the first time when, when I found in the British rules the distinction between a train service and a shunting service, that we have so much in the German operating rules. So here we have the distinction between a train detained on a running line or a shunting movement detained on a running line and the running line as opposed mostly to sidings so running lines also in stations through lines not the sidings and there we are detained at the signal at danger and then this is the rule 55 the rule 55 is historic historical stuff obviously this is not what um what is current uh, operating rules but the old rule 55 told drivers to contact the signaler when detained with the train on a running line at the signal at danger for the simple reason that the signaler does not forget that there is a train waiting at this particular signal. It's not so important if the signaler can actually look out of her or his window and look if there is a train at the signal, but if it is obviously a signal that the signaler cannot see from her or his uh, place in the signaling box and then it can be a really a safety problem if the signal forgets about a train so and then you don't un unlike in road traffic you don't just wait at the red light uh, for the whole day until uh, actually it might change where you would contact the signaler and tell him well i'm sitting here at the red signal don't forget me so actually when do we do that we stop at our red signal and from that the time ticks and the rule as I have found them in the operating rules says as soon as possible when I'm talking about those rules here then I am aware that the operating rules for different railway carriers can differ here but what I'm talking about is the rules that you can find in the RSSB handbook what would be more or less default rules and maybe different railway or railway carriers have different rules that might be stricter in one or the other aspect for the drivers. So the idea is as soon as you stop at the red signal, click in your DRA, you contact the signaler. This is what I meant here with about zero delay as soon as possible, unless a waiting time is shown on the phone, the signal post phone, or in a sectional appendix. You know, this is this document that describes the line. And we also know that most signals in the UK have those signal post phones, these telephones in this box attached to the signals. They actually work in the game. Most of them actually can click on them and contact the signaler, just like clicking on your radio works in many trains or by using the tabulator key 
and then clicking on the contact signal button. And those signal post phones are marked with this symbol here, with those, well, diagonal black and white lines in the square. And if it has a number on it, then it tells you that you can actually wait this number of minutes until you contact your signaler after having stopped at the read signal. So you don't need to do this as soon as possible, but this is the number of minutes that you can wait. And then there is another rule that says if the reason for the signal being read is obvious, for example, there is a train that you can see in the block ahead then you can wait for a maximum of two minutes after stopping before you first call the signaler. So then it, then you just wait until the train has passed and if the signal still stays red, instead of switching to a proceed aspect, then you're supposed to call the signaler and at least after two minutes you have to contact the signaler. <clears throat> and then you repeat it every five minutes First, you contact the signaler, and then if the signal does not clear, you repeat this every five minutes until instructed otherwise. There are some special rules for what happens if there is very poor visibility and you are on a track that does not have track circuits. And uh, a special rule if you are running a train with dangerous goods or post and parcel thingies and... Uh, then you have to contact the signaler immediately in those situations. But I won't go into these special things because typically we are not on tracks of that kind and we are not running dangerous goods trains in the game. So this is when, typically as soon as possible. If you see the reason, you can wait up to two minutes. If there is any other, other number given on the signaling on the signal post phone or in the sectional appendix uh, in general, then you can wait obviously this number of minutes until you contact the signaler. And how would you do it? How would you contact the signaler? Would you just open the window and shout? Or what would you do? Well, obviously the first choice is the train radio. And that is your GSMR GB radio that is on modern trains and in the game actually more and more features are simulated on older trains you just have the graphical representation like on the hst on more modern trains like on the class 158 sprinter actually those buttons do something right so this is this on trains in between on older trains you would have a system that is called the cap secure radio or the national radio network um, device those are analog uh, radio communication systems that used to be used before the GSMR was uh, more or less introduced a couple of years ago completely. And um, I have not seen a game that has a, phys uh, a graphical representation of one of those devices. On the older British locomotives in the game, you do not have any radio at all. And on the more modern ones, you will have a GSMR typically. If you know a train in the game that has a cap secure radio a device or a, a national radio network device, please point it out to me in the comments. I'm not saying there are none, but I have not seen them before. So this is your medium of choice. Only if this does not work or is not there for whatever reason, you would have to resort to the signal post telephone. And this obviously was the thing that you had to do before all this stuff was invented and introduced. You actually had to leave your cup, go to the phone and phone the signaler on the signal post telephone. What's actually a, a, a quite unique thing that at least in the routes represented in the game, you only find on, on British routes, not in Germany, for example, um, at least not at the signal post telephone. There are, Fernsprecher on the German tracks, but not on every signal. In the British routes, typically have from almost every signal a signal post telephone to contact the signal from there. Obviously, you got to get off your train, walk to the phone and use it. What can be a problem, we will get to this later, as we can see here. So this will be the signal post telephone marked with this symbol here without the number giving, or even if it has a number on it, then as it works, 
pretty much as well. Then the rules say if the signal post telephone does not work or if there is none for whatever reason, you can use your mobile phone as the third possibility. So if the possibilities before do not work for whatever reason, then you can use a mobile phone. Obviously, you need to know the number for the signaler to call him on a mobile phone. Um, those devices here, the GSMR radios, they have more or less a built-in phone book, phone directory, where you can find all the numbers for the signal boxes in the UK. But, well, if it is not on your train or if it is not working, you cannot resort to this. So you maybe need to know the number or we will get to this sometimes. There is actually a plague that tells you the number for the signaling box. If that does not work either, because you don't have reception for your phone or you don't have a mobile phone at all like in former times when mobile phones just did not exist what was the last possibility you can use the phone at another signal if there is no signal post telephone on your signal that means you actually have to walk to the other signal you can use a line side phone what is also a phone that can connect you to the signaler uh, but this is not associated with a specific signal but is somewhere on the line and it is marked with a different symbol the black cross instead of the black and white diagonal lines and if that does not work there is still the possibility that you leave your train and walk to the signal box it is in the rules as more or less the option of last resort um, because it is obvious that this can not be done a lot during the day if you actually want to move your train or halfway within the timetable what it is from what i have read still in the rules this is what you need to do if all else fails and change signal yourself yes that's a good idea cd radar so you walk to the signal box shoot the signal and, and clear the signal yourself no obviously you would talk to the signal and tell him well i uh, walked here like within 20 minutes and my train is sitting at this uh, signal and the signal tells you well i just cleared it two minutes after you arrived there you can go back and go on so this is obviously only a thing for last resort so leaving the cap is obviously a thing that can be dangerous and slows things down significantly so there sometimes are restrictions that prohibit you from leaving your cap to use the phone or to walk about on the line to the signaling box or to another telephone send the guard <laughs> if you have one send the guard or the shunter when you get to this if you're a shunting movement you can actually send the shunter to the signaling box to tell the signaler that you're delayed unusually long on the running line with your shunting movement so there are some situations with special signals marked where you can leave the cap only in an emergency or if you are told that the adjacent line the line adjacent to the line that you're running on is blocked that is a quite uh, complicated protocol here um, in some certain situations we will get to this in a second where you can't leave your cap and you cannot contact the signal in any other way you can leave your cap if there is an emergency then you can get out and use a phone that is there somewhere in the uh, vicinity or if you are told by the driver of a train coming along the other line or a competent person on a train like this telling you like something like well signaler in the signal box so and so sends her regards and uh, after my train this line is blocked so you can leave your train and it is safe to do so and use the phone even if there is a diamond on it you can find those r rules in the rules here i don't know if it is done a lot because it sounds extremely complicated and cumbersome but it is still in the rules and for what does it apply if there is no position of safety for you if you leave your cap and use the telephone then you should only do this in an emergency and if someone tells you that the adjacent line is blocked because then there is no uh, danger that you get run over by the train coming on this line so in, if there is no position of safety like in our example with in the tunnel 
or because you are on the middle line and to the left and to the right there are lines running and you cannot really you don't really have a ground to stand on to use this telephone or you have to cross the line to get there um, then you would typically find either on the phone itself the line side phone or the signal post phone if there is one uh, yellow roundel or in the game at least more uh, m more prevalent you can find those diamonds with the X they can be yellow as well I have not seen a yellow one in the game but in the rules you have those four opportunity uh, for for options actually to signal that to tell the driver don't leave your cab unless in an emergency or if someone competent tells you that the adjacent line is blocked because there is no position of safety for you maybe there is a phone maybe there is none but at least there is no position of safety you better stay on your train and um, yeah those signs in the game you actually find them a lot here on the Midland mainline DLC often in uh, the line in the middle where you are actually if you get off your cap have to cross the other line to get to the phone if there is a phone at all right so those signs more or less only tell you if you can't reach the signaler with your radio <clears throat> don't get off the train unless there is an emergency or someone told you that the adjacent line is blocked so maybe use your mobile phone or don't contact the signaler if there is no opportunity without leaving your cap and you can't leave your cap then you just wait sometimes you get a white diamond of this kind without the X that is supposed to tell you if I read the rules correctly that there is no signal post phone so there's no point in leaving the signal anyway no signal post phone here only thing that will work here probably is to go to a line side phone or to walk to the signal box at this point but also the rules if I read them correctly tell you that in a, a situation with a white diamond without an X at least with a number plate with a telephone number you're only supposed to leave your train in an emergency or if someone tells you that the adjacent line is blocked and sometimes with all those signals here white diamond white diamond with X uh, yellow diamond with X there can be a telephone number provided that you can use to contact the signaler if the other thing is here fail so one thing would be probably the mobile phone the other thing would be a line side telephone where you can use this again even if there is a number given and you would have to leave your cab for us if i understand the rules correctly do this only in an emergency or if told that the adjacent line is blocked so why why is that so complicated and why is that so uh, a bit confusing i think this is uh, again a historical thing here that um, if you look up in older signal ring rules you'll find a lot of variations of those diamond signs here some have a D inside some have a T inside some have a L inside some have this X inside some are yellow some are white and uh, some have um, a flashing light that can be illuminated to uh, tell the driver that they have to go to the signaling box anyway and then there were a lot of different rules attached to those signs with what actually is possible to do and what is possible not to do so this is more or less a hodgepodge of, of different signs and uh, regulations that were more or less unified into what we have now the idea in the beginning if i understand this correctly was that those white diamonds exempted the driver from contacting the signaler because there was some kind of track circuitry that um, announced to the signaler automatically that there was a track in this block a train in this block and sitting at this signal so that it was not necessary to contact the signaler um, and uh, leave the cap and uh, get go into danger or uh, cause any delays whereas with GSMR radio and cab radio contacting the signal was not that problem anymore so even if there is track circuitry you would contact the signaler by using the train radio now and this historical development led to this hodgepodge of different signs and, and rules that more or less end up to the same thing if there is a diamond on it 
be it with an X or without an X, you would not leave your cap on unless in an emergency or if someone tells you that the adjacent line is blocked, if that is still a thing and it is done today, I'm, I'm not sure. <clears throat> because you would just use your GSMR radio and apparently it works so well that you don't need this other stuff. Um, to round this up, if on the telephone you find those signs that are limited clearance warning signs, so sometimes these white and uh, red checkered signs you find on tunnels, on bridges or whatever, that typically warn you that there is no position of safety inside or behind that structure and, and that yellow thing here as well. If it is on the telephone, it is interesting to know maybe that the driver himself, after having stopped at the signal that is connected to this phone, can actually leave the train because the train itself is shielding the driver more or less against other traffic or, or uh, and, and you would trust the driver to leave the train in a way that the driver is not run over by its own train. <coughs> so the driver can use those phones other stuff only in an emergency or if told that the line is blocked so the same thing as here why would that be because here the train cannot provide the same protection because the driver might still be on the train and then there might be a train uh, danger coming from this train actually so this is what you can find in those two modules in the rssb rule book for that we know now when to contact the signaler, we know how to contact the signaler, and then actually about what would we call the signaler. We would first make sure that we are talking to the correct signaler. We would have to uh, tell the signaler our location so that the signaler knows at what signal, or if we are in a TCS train, at what block marker we are waiting. If we are waiting somewhere in between, then just make the location clear. And obviously we would tell her or him, our train reporting number, or head code like 2 kilo 49 on this example here, or whatever we are. And what is the way of choice to do that? We will press this SG button here on our GSMR radio that contacts the signaler and more or less automatically tells the signaler where we are. I'm standing here by that nice tree, CD right? <laughs> It's the 472nd tree from uh, Leicester <laughs> to the right. Yeah, better use the signal identifier. It's much better than the trees. Uh, but on a GSMR or a radio, you would not have this problem anyway because the train knows typically where it is. And by pressing the SG button, the radio device, what is not really a radio, it's actually more or less like a, a glorified mobile phone, this thing, using the same standard as, as most mobile phones. And it would just send the identification code of the train plus the location to the signaler automatically. And then you can actually read it. And this works in the game, actually. It would first say sending, standing at signal. Then after second or what, this sending switches to send standing at signal and then the signaler does one of two things typically or maybe there are more things but the the standard things are clearing the signal switching it to clear uh, to a proceed aspect or sending you a wait command on the gsmr telling the driver to wait say the rules and this can obviously be autumn happen automatically on on the gsmr radio Driver sends the location by pushing the SG button and the signaler answers with waiting. What the, the signaler can do, uh, if he doesn't want to do this, he can actually try to reach to talk to the driver, either by calling him on the GSMR automatically uh, from his side or by requesting a, a call from the driver. And it says like contact signaler there and there and uh, then the driver con can contact the signaler and talk to her or him in person. And if I understood this correctly, there are actually three 
ways to do this either on a regular core by pushing this button down here in the game this obviously doesn't work because we cannot talk to the signaler and the dispatcher then there is this yellow button that is sometimes uh, um, used in the game for contacting the signaler but that would be only used if it is urgent what you have to uh, tell the signaler so it's not just that you want to go home and finish your shift urgent but actually urgent because of some reason that concern you and your train and this would actually take pre precedence in in the signaling box so if the signal is talking to someone else in a, a regular way then the urgent call would take precedence over it and the red button would be for an emergency call that actually concerns more than just your train and the signaler but all the other trains in the area and obviously would use those buttons only if it is necessary and emergency calls would actually take precedent over urgent calls and regular calls obviously as well so this is what I have been f uh, able to find out in the rules about what we do if we are get stopped at a red signal it should apply not only if we are stopped on running lines somewhere on the open track but also if we are kept at a signal at a station station through lines at the stations are also running lines and um, yeah then you we would contact the signaler if the reason is not apparent or two minutes have elapsed by pressing the button on our thing and it is nice that in the game some of those features are actually um, simulated like pr pressing the sg button and then seeing the standing at signal and we're getting actually a weight back from from the signaler if the signal is not cleared in any way theodora says what to do in emergency situation as passengers just came up in my mind as video topic suggestion as a passenger right well depends on on the train but most trains nowadays have some sort of a passenger emergency alarm or uh, notbremse and depends on the emergency right if you see some parts of of the wheels sticking through the floor of of, of the train might be a good idea to pull the no premise the emergency brake if there whatever the steward has collapsed then probably you would um, try to reach the driver at the front of the locomotive by using this Sprechstelle or this intercom that on some trains there are right and CD radar says oh <laughs> do you have anything to say what your passengers do in an emergency to contact you well i will think about it i was talking about actually yeah, when when the pieces of the wheels are were, were sticking through the floor that was obviously what i had in mind and there was at the time talk <laughs> If there's actually SOP for it. Yeah. Well, maybe this is a thing that we... I will, I will put it on the list and try to collect stuff and see if, if we can make something out of it. What kinds of... Maybe in connection with the Notbremsüberbrückung. That's also an interesting feature. Like the thing where the driver can suppress uh, uh, an emergency brake demand initiated standard of procedures as SOP. Yeah, if there's actually actually SOP for it. But maybe in connection with the Notbremsüberbrückung. That's actually a good idea. I, I thought about uh, talking about Notbremsüberbrückung, but I thought it is a bit a bit limited uh, topic wise. But maybe in connection with this. We talk about it on Castle Map. Yeah, you're right. We talked about Notbremsüberbrückung a bit with those yellow signs. But um, I did not really get into details then. We talked that those yellow signs tell the driver that this is a part of the track 
where he should suppress an emergency brake demand. But how this is done, how this works on the train. Maybe there is enough. There is enough uh, material to make a stream out of it. So I will put this on the list. But today I think I am done. The only thing, um, a, a rule is if you are a shunting movement detailed on a running line at the signal of danger, there is a, a one or two sentence rule in the British rules. And this is why I love the British rule book for it says, if you are as a shunting movement detained on a running line at the signal at danger for an unusually long uh, period of time, you have to contact the signaler uh, with the, uh, by the quickest way possible. And this can mean going to the signal box or sending the shunter to the signal box. So there is a lot of leeway if you are a shunting movement when and how to contact the signaler and what is an unusually long time and what is the quickest way possible for a train detained on a running line at the signal of danger is much more yeah uh, complicated or there is a, there are more rules to know about it so chili you have to wait we're not going out yet i have to drive the train to Nottingham without spatting this time. So please don't notch me. Unfortunately the GSMR always turns dark. You can deregister de -register. And then you can register a new and you can actually see something happening here. Registration, the head code. And then we registered. So some of the stuff is actually simulated here on this thingy. The buttons that we talked about, this will be probably the regular call button for the signaler. Here for origin calls, for emergency calls. This MU thingy and this book thingy would bring up those registries for the telephone numbers. This is for testing for increased brightness, increased volume. Theodora says, I've seen video of a broken down ICE transfer passengers to another train inside of tunnel. Oh. Well, tunnels are always a great place to break down with your train. And a guy train serving on the back of a regional train. Well, this is something that you should never do ever. The rules should not specify imprecise terms. Then in the event of an investigation, for example, an accident, it would not be clear who made the mistake, CD Radar says. Yep, that is obviously the approach that we have in Germany as well. Not imprecise terms, not so much leeway. But nevertheless, If it works, then it works.
What I actually do not know is if you can end up with your shunting movement on the open track and get detained on the open track at all according to British operating rules. If not, then it's probably a thing that the distances are quite short. Anyway... Beeston. Last stop before we get to Nottingham. So careful this time, but there is no real danger that we can spot because we have a green here. And the green here. Still 80 on this line, if I'm not mistaken. Dropping to 55 or 50 before we get to Nottingham home signal. Green still. Here, for example, we can see what we talked about. Diamond white with an X on this signal. Because there is no position of safety. If we leave our cap here, it's just in the middle between those lines. And even if there were a phone at the signal post here. It wouldn't be safe to leave the cab. Simra is gonna drop their ETCS update end of April. Ah, uh, maybe I should prepare for that and play more Simrail. 
If only I had the time. So this is the junction. Soon enough we will be at the limit to 55. Therefore, it's not 55, it's 50. Getting a single yellow here before we got the green, right? It was not a double yellow that we got. 25 here at the bridge. And 15 at the entrance. I think now we're actually running across the magic switch without the points. Here it is. And whoosh. No problem at all, we can just jump over it. And here we are at Nottingham. Yeah, for example, we can see one of those phones. Provide it at the signal where we can contact the signal actually. All right. That's it for today. 2 hours 20 was quite longish, but I enjoyed driving on the Midland DLC quite a lot. Next week I'll have to take a break and uh, because I'm busy with something else. But I hope I will see you in 2 weeks time. Take care. Be safe. Thank you for bearing with me and for the active chat once again and uh, all the subs and follows. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye bye.